Wherever you are, close your eyes. Unless you're driving or flying a plane, then absolutely don't close your eyes. Or if you're cycling, don't do that. Actually, keep keep your eyes open. Yeah. And think, with with your eyes open, about winning. Feels pretty great, doesn't it? And now you can do it anywhere with the National Lottery app. <laughs> Download the National Lottery app today. Play anywhere, win anywhere. Up slips the lies one day at a time. Give me Kim and Elation's radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Give me Kim and Elation's radio. Give me Kim and Elation's radio. Give me Kim and Elation's radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. This is Cadivas Robinson, and welcome to the Cadivas Robinson Challenge. Um, this week, I want to speak on something that I think a lot of us uh, – have that 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 we face that may be a challenge for us, um, and it is this. You know, there's a statement or a quote that I've seen, and it says, "It says it takes six months to build a Rolls Royce, and it takes 13 hours for a Toyota." Which one are you building? You see, a lot of times in life, when we decide to make a change, when we decide to do something for the better, whether that's you know, uh, learning a different language, whether that's losing weight, starting a new job, coming closer, building better relationships with our family and friends and loved ones. We want the changes to happen immediately. For instance, if someone's trying to lose weight, right, and they start eating properly, they start, you know, working out, you know, drinking more water, you know, cutting out the soda and, and all the fatty foods and the fried foods and stuff, you know, they want to, the next day or two days or three days later, they want to step on the scale and see a dramatic loss in weight. And the truth of the matter is it, it doesn't necessarily work like that. It's the same thing when we think about learning a different language. You know, we, we, we want to say, okay, I want to learn Arabic, you know, or, or I want to learn, uh, 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 you know, Swahili or something like that. And then we start studying it. And then we learn, we, we find out as we go, you know, go through, like I say, a week or a month or whatever, we try to speak it with someone, we learn, we notice that we're not what we want to be or not what we expect it to be. And, and it all comes down to one thing, and that, and that one thing is it takes time. Anything worth doing, anything worth having takes time. Me personally, when I, you know, sometimes I, I, I coach open athletes or professionals, or when I was in L.A. a lot of times, there would be uh, actors and actresses, really good actors and actresses, they they'd be preparing for a movie role. And a lot of them would come either A, to trim up, or B, to get in shape, or C, just to learn how to look like a runner, because they'd be playing a movie, and in the movie they would have to you know, be a runner or a runner, something like that. And they would have to do all those types of things. And, and in other instances, a lot of them would come and they would want to, uh, uh, get a certain type of body, build a certain type of body, and and I get it. They, you know, they was on a t- short time frame. They needed things to happen pretty quickly. But I was trying to explain to them that you know, for for the average person, maybe not the the, the movie star, but for the average person, if you, if it took you two to three years to gain that extra ten, fifteen pounds, why do you think you're going to lose it in two or three weeks? Now that's not to say that there's not tricks and tricks of the trade that we can do. Uh, to help you share weight and trim you up and all those types of things. But the point I'm trying to make is, you know, with anything worth having, anything worth doing, anything with any significant value to it is going to take time. And the analogy uh, of the quote I used earlier about um, the Rolls Royce and about, you know, the, uh, the the Toyota is, hey, you know, Rolls Royce is, you know, is looked upon as being one of those, you know, really, really nice, uh, prestigious cars, right? And, you know, with those cars, you know, it takes a little bit more time to to build it because it's handmade and everything is unique and everything is you know, done. Whereas with the Toyota, not, not to say Toyota's a bad car because it's not. Toyota's a great car. But with the Toyota, because they make, they make so many and, and the idea is to get a good amount of them out there, uh, you know, it, it can make them a, a bit quicker, a bit faster. Also, you got to understand that, you know, there's going to be way, far more Toyotas so than uh, than uh, Rolls Royce, but that's 
that's by design, meaning the Rolls Royce, they understand that everyone cannot afford um, their car. Everyone cannot afford that high quality. Everybody cannot afford that luxury. And so they understand that it's a premium that people are going to have to pay for that and that everyone is not going to be able to afford it and, and, and everybody's not actually not even going to want it or even recognize it or value it. So my point is the same thing with us in life, right? We want to we want to learn a different language. We want to start a different business. We want to uh, develop or build a better relationship. All these different things we want to do. You, you know, we want to coach a team. Uh, we want to grow our hair out. You know, whatever it is, uh, we have to learn that these things take time. And a lot of times, what happens is when you look at individuals, no matter what they're trying to do, they might be you might be trying to stop smoking or stop drinking or stop watching certain types of film or video or cut your you might be wanting to cut your social media time in half and not and stop checking your emails or Facebook or Twitter accounts as much. Whatever it is, a lot of times we 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 want to try it and we want to we want to think that it's going to be easy, or we want the results to come quickly. And when it's not, when it doesn't come easily easy or quickly, we quit, you know. And I was telling, so I was giving a speech, and I was telling some people the other day, I said, you know, anything I do, I'm, for, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain that I'm going to beat at least 70, 80 percent of the people that's doing it, you know. If I, you know, anything I put my mind to, I'm going to do. And the reason I'm going to do that is I'm just not going to quit. See, mostly the law of average is going to kick in. The law of average is going to kick in. Most people, when things get difficult, I don't care what it is. I don't care what the field is. I don't care what you're doing. Most people quit. And it's the ones who are able to keep coming back and keep coming back and coming back that's going to succeed. And so what happens is when we set this goal and we say, okay, you know what, I'm going to set this goal of losing weight. And here it is. It's been a month or a month and a half or a week or a week and a half or whatever the situation may be, and you haven't lost the amount of weight that you wanted to lose, most people quit. Seventy-five, eighty percent of the people are going to quit. I say, you know what? It's, like, it's not even worth it. Either they're going to have to like me for who I am, or they just, or just forget them, you know. But it could be some, some is different. It could be writing a book. I went through that same challenge when I was writing the book, and, and and my challenge was, here I am trying to write the book. It it never was a perfect time to do it. I never had time to necessarily write the book, and I wanted it to be finished. I wanted to to pick a certain amount of pages to get it done. I wanted to to just go ahead and get it published. And when it was taking more effort and energy and resources than I than uh, than I wanted. I kept thinking, why am I even writing the book? I'm not going to make any money on this book, and nobody's probably going to read it anyway. But that's not the point. The point, the point of me writing the book wasn't because I was trying to make a lot of money on the book or because I wanted a million people to read it. It's because I had a book in me that needed to be written, and I'm going to write another one. But it was a point in that journey that I was going through that I was just like, you know what? This is taking too long, taking too much of my energy and time. Forget it, right? And so the the the, the secret. And it's not really a secret, but, you know, Les Brown always says uh, uh, you will win if you don't quit, you know. You will win if you don't quit. And I think a part of that is just knowing it will take time. You know, I'm a coach. I've coached a good amount of, uh, you know, really good All-Americans and in, 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 in things for us, uh, college and champions and, and Olympians and, you know, all these different types of athletes. And a lot of times when they first – come to me, especially on the, in, the, in the college realm, they come in as freshmen, and they want it then, you know, and it's like they were used to being the, some of the best athletes in high school, they were used to being the best in their city or their district or their region or even their state, and uh, they come to college, and sometimes they're not even the best on the team, you know, and, uh, and I have to remind them, hey, it's a journey, like, you, you know, yeah, I mean, if, if you're coming to a school where I, like where I coach in the conference in which I coach in, the odds of you coming in and being the best is is, is is very slim just because it's that competitive. So I have to let them understand, hey, you know what? It takes time, but if you stick with it, you keep the faith, uh, uh, eventually you will succeed. You know, I'm reminded of, uh, uh, of a passage in my favorite book. It speaks about some of the similarities between it also, and it talks about – uh, when 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 Moses and, uh, and and the people were were in the desert and they was wondering, uh, they essentially had to wonder for forty years. Now, <laughs> I, I don't know, but I, I guess that, and I would assume that if if at the beginning of this journey, if someone would have told them that you know what you're gonna have to kind of you know you're gonna have to you know wonder for about forty years in this desert or whatever uh, before you able to, I, I think a lot of them would have said, you know what, what forty years? I, I don't even know if I'm gonna live forty years. 
and they would just say, screw this, I'm going back to Egypt, or I'm going here, I'm doing that. You know, but it was a reason for that. It was a reason for that time frame. It wasn't just a, a, a random number that was picked. It wasn't just having to wait for the sake of waiting. You know, I, I, I asked a question on my website today, and, and the question is, what is one thing that you believe that you no longer believe? You know, and I ask people to answer that question, and hopefully people will get to an answer. But, you know, one of the things I put on there is that, I, you know, good things come to those who wait. Now, that doesn't mean I don't believe that that ever happens. I am certain that good things do come to some people that wait, but I've realized that, nah, uh, good things don't necessarily always come to those who wait. Good things come to those who go out and hustle and get it. You know, because we like to think that if we're doing everything right and we're working hard, that good things are just going to pop up and happen. I wish it was that way. Uh, you know, we like to think if we're networking on Facebook, uh, social media, LinkedIn, if we, you know, we we be doing all these different things, that just some good is going to uh, going to happen. And sometimes it does, you know. But the truth of the matter is. Uh, it doesn't necessarily come to those who wait. There's people when waiting is not, there's different ways of waiting. Waiting is not just you, you're being the effect of a cause, meaning you're waiting on something or someone. Waiting is just you, you keep the faith, you keep working hard, you stay positive, you keep believing. That type of waiting is different, but I think a lot of people think good things come to those who wait, and I hear them talking about it. Well, you know, and, and this is not to knock anybody's belief or anything, and they, well, you know, you know, Whatever they really, this person, God's going to do this, or this person's going to do that, or that's just going to happen, and this, this, and that. And I don't know if that's always the case. I think when you when you look at the examples in my favorite book, it speaks about when the when they was on when, when the when the people uh, uh, was 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 on on the uh, the banks and they was getting ready. They had the, the Egyptians coming toward them and the Pharaoh and all that, and the sea was behind them. You know, sitting there and waiting and sitting there and complaining was not, was not going to do them any good, you know. And so they end up having to obviously, uh, you know, either decide to fight or run or whatever the situation may be. And, and you know the rest. But the point I'm trying to make is that there was the beliefs that I had that I that I no longer uh, necessarily uh, believe in. And one of those was good things, you know, uh, happen for those who wait. And so uh, when I'm talking about the time, when I'm talking about uh, uh, the time that important things happen, that's not to say that the time uh, has to pass without you doing anything. What I'm saying is certain things, I mean, for the most part, you know, it's going to take, you know, nine months for a baby to get born. I know what you're saying. Some babies can be born in six, seven, and eight, but we know, okay, there's a name for that, but we know for the most part, you know, nine months, it's going to take a while for these things to happen. You can try to rush it, but that would that would make no sense. Uh, it takes a while, you know. When I was when my son, was, my oldest son, was younger, I wanted him to to start crawling and walking quicker than he was because I wanted him to, you know. I remember my parents tell me, "Oh, he was walking at seven months," and then I didn't know what that meant, and I learned that that's, oh, that's pretty good, you know. And I'm thinking, oh, my son, he needs to be walking at seven months. He's not even crawling yet, you know. And I, I remember trying to put him in that position, and my grandmama, she was like, "Um, they was, you know, the boy's gonna, you know, he's gonna walk and crawl when he wants to." She gave a story about. <laughs> that she had a brother who was uh, uh, my great uncle or something, and she said that he uh, he wouldn't walk. And she said they was in the at this time they said they was in the country. But anyway, the door would be open, and they was in the country, and, the, and, the, and the, some cotton flew through the door. Uh, I guess they was out there where the cotton was, and they flew through the door, and he jumped up and took off running. <laughs> he had never walked before. And he was trying to, he was older. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't like seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 months. And he was a little bit older. He was like maybe a year or somewhere around now. But it was longer than, he should have been walking already. And she said he just went up, you know, and just took off running and cotton to the him or something or whatever. But anyway, uh, you know, I, and, and my son himself, he didn't crawl for long. He crawled for a week or so. And this thing, you know, he's walking. Um, but there are certain things that just take time, you know, and you can try to rush these things. And lo and behold, it's just not going to work out for you, you know, it's the, it's the story that that I that I'm reminded of. Les Brown talks about uh, a kid who's who's walking, right, and uh, and uh, he sees a, uh, a, a a cocoon, and inside the cocoon he sees this little uh, butterfly kind of butterfly trying to get out of this cocoon, and the boy naively uh, gets a, a, a safety pin from his trousers and he slits the cocoon a little bit just enough for the, uh, the, the the butterfly to kind of get out. He wiggles out and he flies and flutters to the ground and dies. And um, he dies because 
The struggle itself is what gives the butterfly life. The butterfly needs to struggle. It needs to keep pushing to get out that cocoon because not until he's able to be strong enough to push out the cocoon will his wings be strong enough to fly, which will ensure him being able to have a higher chance of life and living and success. But if his wings are not strong enough to get out the cocoon, which means he's getting out a little bit too early, then obviously he can't fly, and if he can't fly, you get the rest. You know, he, you know, so he, he dies. And so uh, certain things just take time. You know, you have to work just like that butterfly. Yeah, he's not just laying there and the cocoon's getting older and it opens up and he's, he's able to easily get out. So he's working that time. He's pushing. He's trying to move. He's trying to go. And he's strengthening his wings at the same time he's able to get out. That's what we have to do sometimes. We have to be that butterfly. We're in our cocoon, and we want to fly, and we know we should fly. We know we can fly. But we we want to we 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 want to get that we want to get the cocoon a little bit too quickly, and sometimes others helping us on that journey is not always good. I see it all the time. We get handicapped because people help us at times in which, you know, we we, we need to help ourselves. You know, sometimes it's certain things that we just have to do. I mean, no matter who your parents are, no matter how rich you are, no matter I mean, you know, relationships. I mean, your parents can't you know they can't go through relationships with you. You know, it's, that's why I like running. Because they can't, nobody can bear you. Your time is your time. Whatever you run is what you run. And so sometimes there are things that we need to go through that's going to take time. You know, it's like a healing heart. Somebody breaks your heart. That takes time for everyone. You know, and the time is not the same for everybody. Some people it might be a week. Some people it might be a month. Some people it might be a year. You know, but nevertheless, you know, you have to understand that when you're working on yourself, when you're working on your life. You know, you, you, you're you choosing between what you're trying to build. Are you trying to build that Rolls Royce or are you trying to build that Toyota? And if you're trying to build the best version of you, you have to understand that that's probably going to take time. So my challenge for you is whatever goal you've, you've set, not only, I mean, maybe for this week, maybe for this month, maybe for the year, the new year, whatever that goal is, and you've struggled with it and you've been at it for a while and you're feeling like, you know, this is not going to work, my challenge for you just this week, in a mini goal, a mini part of that goal, pick a part of that goal in which you can accomplish some in the next uh, two or three weeks, and I want you to just stick with it no matter what. If you said you wasn't going to drink soda uh, and, and, and you struggle with that, just pick the next week, the whole week. There's no soda. If you said you was going to learn a language, right? So if every day for this next week, just, just 10 minutes, learn, learn a word in that language. If you said you're going to build a better relationship with, with, with your families and friends or loved ones or whatever, invest that. I mean, if they, if they don't live in the same place you live in, call them. You know, every day, just five minutes or send them a no, call. Forget the text. Text is too impersonal. Uh, 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 call them and just say, you know what, I, I told myself I was going to connect with you every day this week, and I'm going to do that. You know, and what will happen is you'll see after that week they'll probably start calling you. So my challenge for you this week is for you to understand and, 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 and pick a goal that's going to take a little time and stick with it through that time, knowing that you're building a Rolls Royce, knowing that you're building yourself up and gaining the strength like that butterfly so that at the end of that week, your wings will be stronger and you'll be able to fly. This has been Kadivas Robinson. This is the Kadivas Robinson Challenge. And I holler. One, two. One, two. Let me show y'all how to have swag. Eternal style. Come on, follow me. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. If you want to have swag, man, it ain't that hard. Just simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. If you want to have swag, man, it ain't that hard. Just I just got to brag. See, I got the swag, make the devil get mad. Get mad, mad and it makes mad, me glad. Like a Scottish man dressing all plaid. I wear it loud, I wear it proud. You can see me walking around in a crowd. Cause I'm shining like a diamond. And when them storms come, man, I'm reclining. On his outstretched arm, leaning on the Lord. The fool's got guns, oh man, I got a sword. And it's a double edge, it cut both ways. I fear no evil, my God is with me And he prepares a table before my enemy Now that's super swag, not for the faint of heart You can have it too, if you worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God If you wanna have swag, man, it ain't that hard Just simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God Simply worship Almighty God If you wanna have swag I shall not want. He gives me so much swag I can't help.
help but flaunt. And yeah, I brag, but it's in the Lord. The mother guards are false, so what you bragging for? Some brag on cars and they clothes, but I brag on God who can save my soul. And he's in control of the whole universe. So in my life, I put him first. Above my wife, above my children. On Christ, the solid rock I'm building. And no the rain fall and the floods came and the winds blew, but still the house remained. And you can have the same. All you need is faith and the mustard seed to win life's race. In first place, it ain't that hard. Just simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. Simply worship Almighty God. If you want to have swag, man. If you want to have swag, man, it ain't that hard. So now you know if you want to have swag. You don't have to hang with the thugs and act bad. You don't have to be a desperado. The devil is a liar that you don't have to follow. Let your motto be to serve the Lord. Then your bravado will be like a lion when he roars. I said it once before, it ain't that hard. Just simply worship Almighty God. You wanna have swag, man, man, it ain't hard, just simply, simply, oh God, simply, 